So here's another one of these circuits I threw together that's basically the same as the last one I just made. A little slightly different layout because I'm using the uh, UCC27322 gate driver. It's a little slower. Because the pinout's a little different, it's routed a little different on this board, but same kind of gist, right? It's pretty much how I'm laying it out. Negative on the bottom. Here goes the uh, oscillator. You don't really need a schematic, right? Um, you just kind of lay this out how it how it makes sense. So got a 12 volt regulator power coming in here, feeding this 12 volt regulator, and that's just feeding straight out to this terminal here to power the gate driver. It's also powering this 5 volt regulator. It's coming out powering this uh, hex inverter Schmidt trigger, right? So the only real addition there is you got this capacitor. And resistor so the capacitor is just going off the first input one leg to the first input and the other leg is going to ground and then you've got a resistor that's going to go across the first input and the first output it's just that simple in this case I've got another something like 470 ohms in series with this 5k pot basically just trims the the maximum uh, frequency that's going to reach by adjusting it that's about 300 picofarad that I've got across the first input and the negative. That gives me about 900 kilohertz or so up to close to 7 megahertz. There actually are uh, quite a few really viable gate drivers for these kind of circuits that you could drive uh, coils you know, well up to the 7 megahertz or so region. So I'm going to grab those and then I, I feel pretty confident that once I implement that in the same type of setup, then uh, I can push some real serious power. All right, so here's here's an example of how uh, gate charge really matters. If I was to measure the capacitance across the gate and the source of random MOSFETs that I've got, I think this is a 460. This particular one is going to be a little bit over, uh, on a probably like 2.5 nanofarad, right? Some IRFP 260Ms that I've used. I've actually noticed that for whatever reason, some of these that I bought recently have about five and a half nanofarads on the gate, whereas some other ones I've had were, you know, a couple less than that. Say for example, this little 220 package MOSFET, this is a 640, so that's a 200 volt, 18 amp. It's pretty common for this type of application. If I cut that on, uh, the lowest setting on this, uh, oscillator now it's fairly quick it's actually not quite as fast as what i get from that sick fit uh, you know which is why i bought it but it's pretty fast so i can actually swing that guy up to i don't know let's bring it to uh i'll put it at about this is about what i was running this guy right gate drivers having no trouble at all driving this little fit that frequency whereas I was probably pumping about twice as much power maybe a little bit more to drive that guy that's just how it is I mean I can't push the power that I can through this one as I can through this one this one has its downsides obviously it's gonna be more lossy uh, but I can drive this one actually fairly quickly so this might be this this might be the actually the only fed I've got on me uh, that I can drive up to these frequencies. So let's just say I swing it all the way to the highest that I can that I've got the Schmidt trigger set to, the Schmidt trigger oscillator, then um, it's about 6.9 megahertz. So, you know, it starts to look a little dirty, slopey, but again, um, that might work. All right, so I've just got the primary circuit set up here where I've just got this random coil. It's going to be a particular length. And I've got a one nanofarad capacitor across the drain and source. So with the oscillator driving the gate driver, this is my uh, gate waveform. So I'm currently at about four megahertz. And I've got this supply on it. So I'm going to cut that on. Pretty low voltage. So my drain swing is going to be a little under 50 volts. And at four megahertz, that's about where this is tuned properly. So if I start shifting that around, I'll start swinging it a little bit below. You can see what's happening. Start 
going above. All right. So let's swing way low. All right. So this is telling me that you see where that gateway form starts to smooth out. About that four megahertz region is uh where this is tuned decently, right? So I can cut it up to about twenty two volts or so. It's really not pulling anything. And uh that's what the that's what it's looking like. Alright, so while the six forty will probably work, uh, you know, fairly low power. I also found this two sixty N. It's an Amazon two sixty. So it's just a different type of two sixty. And uh when I cut that on, it's not expected, but uh, you know, that's something like one and a half nanofarad on the gate, maybe less. So, which by the way is uh, you know, a little bit over a half a watt for about a megahertz gate drive. So, I can bring that up to I don't know something like. Uh, six six seven megahertz maybe i started pulling three watts let's say about maybe that right there is as high as i'd want to go so close to let's just say five megahertz i can get away with with this particular 260 same gate driver so that's kind of dirty but uh let's say i you know do about three and a half like i was used to or you know even lower still much better so yeah i'm probably gonna run that mosfet until i get a new sick fit i've got this circuit set up with a cheap amazon 260 um and the secondary is actually right now the whole circuit's pretty similar to how i've got a little guy right there laid out almost similar values except i've got a real dirty coupling here between one coil down here and another coil right here I'm just kind of stacked on top. Center point here. It's got this screw hanging off of it, right? So it's about 2.7 2 megahertz. So nothing special. Uh, but again, this is the uh, 27322. And I've got sort of a, you know, random fed here. And I uh, seems to run all right. Cut that on. Get that going. So that's what that's looking like. But you can see, uh, and I got this bush coming out. Oh, just got lit the glass. So that's about 185 watts. Actually, pull the arc off the uh, off this guy. Pull the hot arc off that guy. But that's 31 volts. Pulling about six amps. Damn near can't even uh, see it. But that's not bad. Uh, cut that off real quick. So, about one and a half watts. You know, gate drive on that 260. 2.7 megahertz not a bad frequency you know it's not too low uh it's not too high either you know pretty decent compromise yeah, it's just cool how you know how well that works with this crappy toss together of coils a lot of times i think man i don't want to splice wire on after i've broken it you know i'd rather just rewind it blah 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 and here i've just sloppily twisted these together and tossed one on top of the other <laughs> it seems to run fine right so, yeah, it's just how it goes, I guess. But as far as the tuning on this, it's not perfect, right? Like, I can still, the uh, fit still heats up, but it's still sort of impressive what I can get out of that. The thing I've noticed about the switching on this is, so long as I do have a pretty substantial bush coming out, it seems a lot more forgiving on the various tuning. All right, so if I cut that on at about 31 volts or so, and that pops out, it's not quite classy, it's, uh swinging down a little too early um, so I need to change up that cap value but so long as there is a bit of bush going like that right then I can 
well, let me just do it like this. I can vary that waveform. I can go way below, and then I can go way above. I'm doing quite a bit of shifting right here. I don't know if you can see, you know, like about 2.9 megahertz, and I'm going all the way up to, you know, like 3.1. And uh, it doesn't really shift that switching too much. Um, it gets a little interference because when I leave my hand here, it's going to be tuned a particular way. When I move my hand, it kind of changes up very slightly. So that sounds telling me I'm a little too far back. So right there is where it likes running the best. Although that's going to develop heating in that fit. You see I've thrown a fast diode on here also on the drain to help that. Since it's undershooting. Um, but yeah, probably what I'm going to do is um, change that cap value up and then try to push way more power out of here. Because, uh, I mean, hell, it's really not even struggling at the moment. Coil's not even warm, really feels like. It's kind of interesting. So, I don't really feel anything there. It's not doing too bad, actually. Um, so I just need to switch that cap value up slightly and then see what I got. Of course, before I do all that, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and try to crank it up to the point where I've got, I don't know, about 200 volts on the drain. The off cycle, just, just to kind of see. Oops. Man, that one, uh, that was interesting. As soon as I cut it on that time, Arc jumped out of this screw here when it's actually going straight to the primary. <laughs> so I'm not sure how that survived that. Uh, angle that a little differently huh interesting let me do that again cut back on all right well it came out the top that time so anyway with it switching like that um I'll put it maybe back down to about something like that and now i'm just going to keep cutting the voltage up so, I'm at 150 now, with 200 watts, so 220, so yeah, right about there, so 250 watts, it'll run, and don't have a lot of crazy ring in there, right? Not bad. So about 250, that's probably where I'll be able to notice some heat here. Yeah, I can feel it warming up. Uh, this guy, not, I don't really feel much on this guy right here. So, predominantly in the uh, MOSFET. So, yeah, I need to kind of tweak that a little bit. But, damn, 250, yeah, not bad. Again, real basic setup here. I feel like uh, if I stop using a crap fit and uh, throw a better one in there, then, uh, yeah, this thing will work pretty well. So, I kind of like... What is this, 32 gauge? Yeah, 32 gauge wire, 2.8 megahertz, something like that. About two turns on a primary, about that long, somewhere around two to three nanofarad. Seems to work pretty good. 